Okay, now let's take a look at the data, guys. Let me show you something here. This is Sunspot daily count, and we are going to see if there's a correlation with the SPX, basically the S&P 500 index. The date range is going to be from July 27th of 2021 through October 28th of 2021. So about a, about um, about three months. Okay. So let's start with the sunspots. That's a lower graph. So let's just we're going to keep this simple. We're going to just connect pretty much high to high, right? We're just going to connect high points. Let's do that, okay? Can start over here at the far left is fine. Okay. And we'll come all the way down to there for now. Okay? Just hitting on these high points here. All right? Just hitting the high points. Boom. 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 Any significant high point, we're going to hit it. Okay? Okay, let's do the same thing for the S&P 500. So we're going to start on the far left. High point right here. Okay. Look familiar? Yeah. Now some people are going to say, there's no correlation there. Can't you see a big drop right here that doesn't show up right here? That's right, it doesn't. But it might show up right there. And we'll talk about that. We can always talk about the low points later. For now, we're just connecting high to high. Okay. So we can see in the sunspots back in late July, we're fairly low, right? Around 20. And they worked their way all the way up to, well, probably close to 100 up here. And then work their way all the way back down to about 40-ish. You know, that would probably be about halfway point between 10.3 and 10.17. So take 14, about 10.10. About 10, 10. So about 10.10 10 right here. Okay. Now, if we stay with that theme, high point to high point from about 10.10, 10, let's, let's, at the bottom here for the sunspot count, let's, let's continue on. Well, there's... There's only one place to go. There's only one other high point for sunspots. It's way over here. Okay. And that's probably about 1027 right here. Let's do the same thing now for the S&P 500. Just connect, just going to connect up the highest spots that we can find along the way on the chart. Okay. Whoops. Got away from me a little bit there. To there. Okay. So I don't know about all of you, but if you can't see that these two are correlated, I don't know what to tell you. Okay, this is clearly going up on the average. You know, if you get caught up in the daily ups and downs, and you don't step back away from the from the data, you get, you know, you're down in the trenches, then you're not going to see the correlation. But the correlation is definitely there. Here's a peak right up here, which happens about 9.5. This one happens at about 9.7. Obviously, as sunspots work their way up, so the S&P 500, sunspots work their way down. Okay, so the S&P 500 worked its way down. Okay, they may not have hit exact peaks at the same exact days. They may not have hit exact lows at the same exact days. It doesn't matter. We're talking about, you know, over the long run, what are we observing? Okay, and that's pretty obvious that price was good. I mean, the, S the sunspots were going up and the S&P 500 was going up with it, right? And we see this play out over and over again. Now, there's sometimes, and I've talked about this in the last video, there'll be divergences. So we'll continue to do the deep dive on when the divergence happen. You know, what's really going on there? So in this time frame, and this isn't always the case, but this, I picked this out on purpose so that we could see over a three-month period, you know, do we have a correlation? Well, we have this year. 
you know, these last three months, I should say, for sure there's a correlation. It is pretty obvious. Okay. Now let me switch over to a sunspot chart, another sunspot chart. And we're going to look at the strength of the current solar cycle that we're in because it's very interesting. Okay, so hold on. We're going to switch over to that. Okay, so this is the Space Weather Prediction Center. That's right. They have something called the Space Weather Prediction Center. Okay, solar cycle progression. Now, you know, you can always go to this. Just type it in your favorite search engine, Space Weather Prediction Center, and it'll come up and you can go check out the data, okay? So what we're looking at here at the top, this top chart up here is sunspot numbers. This is daily, okay? Now, the, we just came out of this solar cycle and came all the way down into the solar minimum, okay? Which the solar minimum, I think, was, is this monthly or am I looking at, okay, I'm sorry, looking at monthly, not daily. The solar minimum was, I think, actually was May. Let's see if I can find it. Yeah, approximately May, okay. 0.2, 0.6. Yep. 0.5 in August. 0.2 in February as well. Well, we're gonna keep. We're gonna say May is the solar minimum. Okay. May of 2020. What a surprise that we had one of the biggest stock market crash. Well, a big stock market crash. February, March of the same year, like right here. <laughs> Okay, and the, the uh, pandemic, pandemic, whatever you want to call it, happened right at this time, guys. I don't know how people can say there's a correlation. I don't know. They're asleep. Clearly, at the solar minimum, we had a significant event that impacted the entire world. Okay, so the red line here is the... Um, there's a committee of people to get together, and they predict the solar cycle and the sunspot. Uh, activity and this is that line right there the red line okay now the purple line is the um, smooth monthly values okay so clearly we can see that this solar cycle so far is well above the prediction okay that's actually a good thing we, we want it to be high but we don't want it to be low because let me show you something here. let's go back see if I can get this to play nice here yeah. So look at this solar cycle. Let me go back even a little bit further, guys. Look at this solar cycle peak. I talked about this in the last video that I did for the this, this solar video. Compared to these peaks. This is a very weak solar cycle. I mean, like, really weak. So it's not uh, completely um, unexpected that we would get some really significant world event at the low because solar energy coming into the earth was low for the last 11 prior years from this point to this point we did not have a lot of solar activity right the electromagnetic influences from the sun and the earth were low usually we see i talked about this before you see high crime especially coming out of a, a very low maximum as you come out of the maximum, you come down to the low, you'll see an increase in crime and an increase in health issues. Okay, a lot of psychological issues going on as we get down into these lows. Very, very common. Okay. So we can see so far anyway that the purple line, the, the smooth monthly values are, are above the predicted red line. Let's hope it stays that way because we don't want another one of these. You know, we want this, this puppy... We want this puppy, guys, to come up and be much stronger, like get up into here. Let's hope we get something like, at least something like that, okay? We definitely don't want this stuff. That'd be the same as this one over here. Oof. Because I can tell you what, as we get into 20, 30, 31, and 32 over here, it's not going to be kind. Okay? Would not be good. Okay, let's switch over. I'm going to talk about briefly an article um, about how the solar um, energy and the sunspots and electromagnetism that comes from the sun, how it impacts 
the physiology. So I'm going to switch over to that, okay? Very important that we look at that as well. Okay, this was an article that was done by the Institute of North Industrial Ecology Problems in Russia from 1948 to 1997, okay? So this is quite an extensive um, study they did. Found that geomagnetic activity showed three seasonal peaks. Now, this was done each year, right? So they found that March through May, the month of July and October, they had peaks. And they said every peak matched an increase incident or incidences of anxiety and depression, bipolar disorder, suicide. It was all done in this city right here, okay? Karovsk, however you pronounce this. My Russian's not so good. Okay, so electromagnetic activity from the sun affects our electronic devices and human electromagnetic field. Okay, so apparently we have our own. Everybody knows that current runs through our own bodies, right? We have an electrical system in our own bodies. The, the brain sends electrical impulses, and that's how our muscles move, and we do and communicate back and forth between the muscles and the brain, okay? So it says, we are physically, mentally, emotionally altered by electromagnetic charges from the sun. Our body can feel sleepy, but also become highly energized, okay? Then there's this gland called, I hope I pronounced this right, pineal gland, which is in the brain, is also affected by electromagnetic activity, which causes the gland to produce excessive melatonin. Okay, so this gland, the, I hope I'm pronouncing this right, the pineal gland in the brain is affected by electromagnetic activity. Okay, and what does it do? It helps produce, when that happens, it produces excessive melatonin. Okay, this is a hormone that causes sleepiness, but also it's like a, it can have kind of an opposite effect on, on some people, okay? But it's kind of a feel-good, feel-good hormone. Okay, so when this gland has uh, excessive melatonin production, or it does have excess melatonin production during solar storms, okay? Or in other words, heightened electromagnetic activity. This study was done for nearly 50 years. So, and I here's there's some other things too that I think that I'm gonna get just get a little deep here just for a second, okay? I think um, that other types of things occur during heightened electromagnetic activity, not just during um, solar storms, but just when you're when these uh, solar cycles come into a maximum, okay? I think there's probably a correlation with dreams. You probably people have, some people have more dreams during heightened, um, the heightened uh, high parts of the, of the solar maximum or as we approach, as sunspots begin to increase. My instincts tell me that there's uh, probably more dreams happening because electromagnetic activity is impacting the brain so even while you're sleeping you're getting more activity you're getting more dreams stuff like this even take it a little deeper here um i think there's a certain connectivity just throughout mankind okay and as we get into heightened electromagnetic activity which is happening as the solar cycle sunspots increase and solar energy increases in the earth i think there's there's like a an unknown connection just in mankind okay it's not probably well studied at all, okay? And it's probably, you know, I'm not saying that people can read each other's minds or anything, but I think there's like a heightened awareness, okay? Now, I'm a Christian, so I don't dive too deep into the into the peripheral stuff, but um, I also don't ignore science. I don't, just because I'm a Christian, I don't ignore um, empirical evidence, okay? So I find it very, very interesting that, you know, this study, among other studies, uh, I mentioned in the last video that they have done deep, deep studies on solar activity, electromagnetic activity, and how it affects the rhythm of the heart. And they found that indeed it does affect the rhythm of the heart and has health consequences as well as the brain. So very interesting. So why am I mentioning all that? Because let me switch back over. We're going to finish up this video with this. It makes perfect sense to me that, you know, the way people trade, okay, and how it affects their how it affects their brain and the way they feel and all this stuff going on, okay? It just makes perfect sense to me, you know? And I don't even think people realize it, because it's happening on 
I mean, this thing has happened on a celestial scale and impacting us, and we just don't know it. An entire world being impacted in such a way that it affects, it affects the way we think, the way we uh, make decisions, you know, how we sleep, how energized we are, and all that impacts our decision making. That's what I really want to get down to. That it looks like to me, guys, that solar activity impacts our decision making, right? We have the way the chemicals flow in our body, okay, in other words, hormones, the way the hormones go up and down are impacted by electromagnetic activity coming from the sun, all right? And the last thing I want to finish up with is just my observation that I haven't been, been able to prove because I'm just kind of diving into it now. And it's a little bit out there, but I'm going to mention it here. It looks like to me the data suggests that prior to sunspot activity, there's something else that's being ejected from the sun. And I don't know what that something else is. But the data suggests that before sunspots are actually uh, visually identified, you know, and as as we all know, they the, the, um, the NASA watches the sun very closely every second of every day. Okay, as you saw in the opening to this video, you know that's that's real footage. Okay, they're watching it every moment of every day. Okay, and to me, it appears that just looking at the data as I dive in deeper into data. It looks like prior to actual increase in sunspot activity, something else is coming out from the sun, okay? And I don't think it's visual. And I don't think we can visually see it. And we may not even be currently have instrumentation that actually picks it up, but I believe that's happening. I don't know what that something is, but I believe it's happening. And it may not even qualify as electromagnetic. It may be something else that we just don't fully understand. But... The data suggests it, and I'll, uh, when I, I'm going to take a little more time to think about that, but I'm beginning to see some things in data that suggest that prior to sunspot activity being increase, that something else is happening coming from the sun and hitting the earth, okay? And then society as a whole is responding to that, and then sometimes shortly thereafter, the sunspots will show up. So... I'm going to leave it right there for now because I know that sounds pretty far, pretty far fetched, but the data kind of suggests that sometimes, and that's what I'm seeing. I'm seeing a phase. There's, there's a phasing going on sometimes. It's really, to me, it's obvious. There'll be um, a certain movement in the, in the stock market, and then we'll see sunspots show up almost to the exact same uh, amplitude. Okay, there'll be a correlation between the amplitudes. And sometimes they're phased. Even on this chart here, you can see that some things are phased. Okay, look, look at this low right here. And there's a low right here. They don't happen at the same time. In this case, it looks like to me the low uh, of sunspots was a prelude to a low in the market. But I've seen it, I've seen it uh, many times go the other way. Many times I've seen it the other way around. Where it looks like that, that human behavior actually knows before time that there's going to be a significant change in sunspot activity and that's what interests me right there guys okay i'm gonna say it one more time to finish the video it looks like to me that human behavior sometimes knows prior to a significant change in sunspot activity the human behavior is aware of it and as a prelude to the change in sunspot activity the human behavior already acts upon and i'm not sure if that's to me, it feels it, there, my my instinct tells me that that's something that's coming from the sun that we don't yet know what that is, and we don't visually see it, and we don't have instrumentation that picks it up. Okay, maybe it's I don't know. Who knows? Okay, I don't know what it is, but but I get a sense that that's happening, and I'm just gonna leave it at that. Okay, everybody, hope you really enjoyed the video. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel. Give me a thumbs up. Really appreciate it. Don't forget to click all. Uh, the little bell to be notified of all the videos as I put them out, guys. Very interesting study. I'm going to do some more solar um, videos as I take a deeper and deeper dive into this. Very interesting subject matter. Happy trading, everybody. Talk to you all real soon again next time.